everyone welcome back to my channel high point the best place to have contents related to ugc net english so in this video we are going to look at the famous the most important influential and a revenge strategy by william shakespeare we have seen many uh, of his works chronologically so this is yet another video about his yet another play or drama or tragedy by uh, William Shakespeare which is titled as Hamlet and if you have not yet started to follow my channel please subscribe to my channel for more contents like this and follow me in Instagram for more reels and saveable materials study cards and videos related to English literature and in this video we are going to have uh, all the major details related to Hamlet including a detailed analysis and summary of Hamlet and also prior to that we will have an introduction and also also the major characters of the play will be also described if you are interested in it keep on watching and let's begin introduction to the play like i said so it's a tragedy by william shakespeare and it is also a revenge tragedy and we can see many contents and many elements of revenge tragedy including a play within a play the presence of ghost and bloodshed and lots of murders happening in uh, not intrigues actually uh, plans and plots and people are going against and revenge and revenge it's uh, is, uh, is there and uh, you know uh, you know there are a lot of elements that we can term it as a revenge tragedy and the full title of the play is the tragedy of hamlet prince of denmark and it is probably written by shakespeare between the years uh, 1599 and 1901 and this is his longest play okay so hamlet by shakespeare is uh, shakespeare's the longest play and it has 29,551 words and it is set in Denmark see in the title itself we can see that the tragedy of Hamlet Prince of Denmark it is set in Denmark and it shows the revenge of Hamlet against his uncle Claudius who has murdered his father in order to seize the throne and marry his mother so in a line in a one sentence this is what happening in the story Claudius is the title character Hamlet is Hamlet's uncle and he kills claudius kills his own brother uh, which who is hamlet's father and claudius kills his own brother in order to have the throne of denmark and also marry his mother i mean hamlet's mother so it is shakespeare's most influenced word of which the critics readers never get tired of interpretation so we can see that in the postmodern age also hamlet is being studied by critics and the relevance of shakespeare and because of hamlet uh, shakespeare is studied not only because of hamlet but hamlet is recurrently studied by the critics every other age we can see people are perplexed and people are confused and people are you know um, in many aspects people are studying hamlet and we can expect at least one question in every other question paper from hamlet or anything related to hamlet so it is the most influential and most important play by or one of the most important play by shakespeare and it is described as the world's most famed story after cinderella so that is also another feature related to uh, another fact related to the play hamlet and it is described as the world's most filmed story after cinderella okay so the story of hamlet was derived from the legend of amlet preserved by 13th century chronicler saxo grammatius uh, and his gesta denorum okay so we can see that this is the source of the story hamlet so it's a, a story derived from the legend of hamlet and this legend of hamlet was preserved by the uh, 13th century chronicler saxo uh, Grammatia uh, in his Gesta Denorum. So we can see that the story was subsequently retold by the 16th century scholar Francois de Belleforest and there are three different versions of the story is available so about legend of hamlet and hamlet we can see three different versions of the story is available recently psychoanalytic critics have examined hamlet's unconscious desires in the, in the modern and postmodern era we can see after the development of the discipline psychoanalytic criticism we can see that from that point of view also hamlet's unconscious desires and hamlet's procrastination is also uh, discussed and examined by critics and the feminist critics also re evaluated the often maligned characters of Ulf Ophelia and Gertrude. See, you know, from the background of 
different types of criticisms and the schools of criticism and also movements hamlet is continuously studied for various purposes to know various aspects of the play that's why i already told you the next we can move on to the characters of the play so since it is the longest play this will take a little longer uh, to explain and finish the video so uh, be with me if you want to have the complete uh, audio lectures related to william shakespeare his major plays and his major comedy tragedies his uh, poetical uh, productions and also his uh, literary er the literary criticism related to shakespeare and his uh, life and literary career and all then you have to definitely go and visit my website and see that i have given more than five sessions for five full length uh, you know exceeding one hour i think each audio exceeds one hour so such a lengthy audios i have given about shakespeare so about shakespeare we all know that at least one question one or three questions will be there about shakespeare shakespeare or shakespearean plays and poems so you know uh, you can go and visit my website if you want more simplified and detailed comprehensible study materials in the form of audio lectures and pdf materials which are downloadable and also previous and practice question papers which are lively attemptable in the website and as many times as possible you can come back to all these materials as many times as possible once you subscribe to the course and it comes with many many more things like uh, study guidelines and personal guidelines for learning all these audios and all so if you are interested you can go and visit and you can also join a whatsapp group for daily quizzes and the news and updates related to uh, ugc net english language and literature all the links are there in the description box go and visit it and click it if you are interested so let's move on to the major characters of the play hamlet hamlet the title character uh, character is the major one son of the late king and nephew of the present king claudius and claudius king of denmark hamlet's uncle and brother to former king so claudius is the major the main culprit here and gertrude uh, queen of Den denmark and hamlet's mother and polonius chief counselor to the king ophelia polonius's daughter horatio friend of hamlet uh, lightus polonius son voltimand and Cornelius, Cortius, then Rosengrans and Gildestern, Cortius and friends of Hamlet. So Rosengrans and Gildestern are dead. It is a play by uh, Stoppard. So that's a meta drama, and in which Rosengrans and Rosengrans and Gildestern they they play the major role, and it discusses many things about the production of the play and how uh, you know things are happening behind the scene, behind the curtain and all. Then Osric, he is a courtier. Next characters: Marcellus, an officer; Francisco, a soldier; Reynaldo, Polonius's servant; Ghost, the ghost of Hamlet's father. So, Hamlet's father, the late king of Denmark, is also named as ha Hamlet. Okay, father's father of Hamlet is also named as Hamlet. So, don't get confused. Okay, King Hamlet is there. The Prince Hamlet is there. Prince Hamlet is the central figure or tragic hero here. Then Fortinbras, Fortinbras is prince of Norway. Norway. Then we have grave diggers, a pair of uh, sextants. Then dramatic players also are there. Now let's see. Move on to the summary of the play. So before the play begins, what is there? Before the play begins, the King Hamlet is already dead. So we can see that when the story begins, King Hamlet of Denmark, uh, that means father of Prince Denmark, is already dead, and his wife is. Uh, married hastily married uh, by his brother claudius and who have who was also crowned as the king of denmark and prince hamlet and others are mourning over the death of the king so uh, prince hamlet is and others they are mourning over the death of the king and denmark and the neighboring norway are not in good terms so we can see that denmark before the story itself we can see denmark and the neighboring country norway they are not in good terms uh, as some years ago King Hamlet slew King Fortinbras of Norway in a battle, and now Denmark fear that invasion by Prince Fortinbras. Prince Fortinbras is the son of the late King of Fortinbras, so uh, Denmark now fear that Prince Fortinbras he will invade Denmark at any time in the nearby future. So all this. Are there before the beginning of the play? So let's begin the scene. While the summary of Hamlet. So the story begins in a cold night on the ramparts of Elsinore. So the 
major act is happening in the palace known as Anasana where Prince Hamlet is there and Gertrude and uh, the King Claudius is there. So every other act is happening, every other action is happening, most of the actions are happening in Elsinore Palace and uh, the ramparts of Elsinore, uh, the night watch is there, the time is night and uh, they are discussing over the appearance of a ghost. So appearance of a ghost that resembled the late King Hamlet. It is actually a bad woman because something bad is going to happen. You know, usually it has such a belief there that if a ghost appears, that means something bad has happened, already happened and something uh, very um, unusual also is going to happen. And uh, Horatio, who is a friend to Hamlet and Horatio is present there. And as it appeared again, they decided to inform Prince Hamlet. Though in that cold night also, this uh, late the, the ghost that resembles the late King Hamlet, it appears again. So Horatio was also there. So he decided to inform Prince Hamlet. There ends Act 1 uh, and Scene 1. Act 1, Scene 1. Then now Act 1, Scene 2. The next morning, Claudius and Gertrude in the court and he talks about him marrying Gertrude. And also mentions that the threats from young Fortinbran. So, you know, they were discussing Claudius and Gertrude in the scene 2 of Act 1. They were discussing about, in the court, they are discussing about the, the rumors going on about their marriage. And also they mention about the uh, the threat that is there that they are fearing from uh, young Fortinbran. So, Prince, Prince of Fortinbran. And Claudius dispatches Cornelius Voltimand with a message for the king of Norway, Fortibras's elderly uncle. So, um, the king of Norway is young Fortibras's elderly uncle. And he dispatches, Claudius dispatches a message uh, with Cornelius and Voltimand to king of Norway. Then Latus tells his desire to return to France. Latus is son of Polonius. He came from France in order to mourn over the death of the late king and also participate in the marriage of Claudius and Gertrude and the coronation of Claudius and all. So Latus, he now everything get over, uh, you know, he want to return to France. So he came uh, to Claudius to ask for, uh, you know, ask for his permission. So King Claudius and uh, Latus's father Polonius, both of them grant uh, him to the permission to return to France and uh, Claudius advises Hamlet who is still in his morning dress for his father so he advises and he consoles he tried to console he seem seemingly he is consoling Prince Hamlet uh, who is still in his morning dress for his father he and Gertrude ask him to stay close to them and leave his studies in Wittenberg as he is in the next king so he says that see since he is too much affected by the death of his father, Gertrude and Claudius, now they are his uh, new parents. So, he's, they asked him to stay close to them because so he has to learn and he has to have experiences of being a king. So, how to be a king and also they asked him to be close with them and also leave his studies in Wittenberg. So, while his father was, you know, dying, uh, he was not there. He was in Wittenberg having his studies there. Then king and the queen leave. Next comes. Then after uh, the departure of the king and the queen. That means Claudius and Gertrude. We can see the first soliloquy by Hamlet. There are a lot of soliloquies by Hamlet. So we can see the first soliloquy here in act 1 of scene 2. And in that soliloquy he expresses his desire to die. And suddenly Horatio comes to the room and reveals about the appearance of a ghost which resembles the late king. And this stunned the prince and agreed to come there in the night and see. So this actually surprised uh, Hamlet very much. and. Uh, you know, he agreed to come and see what is happening there. There is scene 2 of Act 1. Now we have Act 1, scene 3. Here, Polonius' lengthy advices to his son Latus and Ophelia starts this scene. So we can see Polonius as a character who talks too much. Okay, even it is not needed, he always, uh, you know, uh, gives advices to his son of, and his daughter Ophelia and he unnecessarily speak too many things. Okay, so actually uh, here we can see the uh, 
love of Shakespeare for quibbles and wordplay. So Polonius's lengthy advices starts the scene three of Act One, and he's advising his son Lytus and uh, Ophelia. So he is advising Lytus, what should you be like when you are in a foreign land? And also he is advising Ophelia that he knows that Hamlet is affectionate to Ophelia, but he says that see he is a prince and he is going to be a king, so his choice of marriage won't be won't be depending upon. solely or only upon his own desire for a woman maybe he won't marry you so you will end up in you know rumors and there will be bad it will only give you bad names so don't do that keep a distance from hamlet and all so in that way polonius is actually you know enormously more than wanted he advises both of them and he tells ophelia that he sh she should keep a distance from hamlet and he is the prince of the country and he can never marry her since the future of the country depends upon him so there and scene 3 of act 1 now we have act 1 scene for now hamlet joins the night watch so the time is night and hamlet as he said as he agreed he goes to the night watch and soon after uh, the midnight the ghost appears and hamlet goes to talk to it and hamlet was skeptical about since he was uh, you know he was studying he was educated even though a ghost appeared before him he never believes totally whatever Uh, the ghost said about his death but he want to verify that's how he is actually that's the one reason that he procrastinate the revenge that he has to take upon uh, claudius but uh, you know because he was skeptical about the information passed by the ghost so the appearance of ghost before hamlet for the first time happens in the scene 4 of act 1 now let's move on to act 1 uh, scene 5 the ghost speaks to hamlet revealing the murder of the king hamlet now the ghost hamlet or the late king's ghost started to reveal the secret behind his death to his son hamlet and he was killed he reveals that he i mean the ghost reveals that he was killed by claudius by pouring venom through his ears in order to have the throne and his wife gertrude and the ghost urges him to take revenge upon claudius as dawn comes the ghost disappears so as the dawn comes the ghost disappears and he asks the before its departure the ghost urges prince hamlet to take revenge upon claudius now shaken by what he heard so even though he was um, not in a good mood and he was mourning over the death of his father and he was not happy with his mother's marriage and all but he was you know he never expected such a thing so he was quite surprised and shaken by what he heard and he could not tell anything to his friends because he don't he doesn't know whether it is correct and claudius the one who ha he has to take revenge he is the king of denmark very powerful he cannot go against him all of a sudden if he reveal anything to his friends you know that same moment it will be heard by claudius it will reach to uh, reach to king claudius and he will get murdered for that or he will get killed for that so he could not tell anything to his friends and there and asked horatian marcellus not to give anybody any hints about that they have seen and heard here he also said that he is going to act as a mad man so from there on he want to check the very you know factuality or truthfulness or truth value of whatever the ghost to reveal you know the ghost is a supernatural thing and hamlet is a student and hamlet he is a learned man so when his father was dying he was in wittenberg having his studies so he all of a sudden he could not believe the words of a supernatural thing so in order to verify the facts he wanted to act as a mad man and he reveals that and he wanted to uh, check the truth value of the facts revealed by the ghost now act 1 ends there now begins act 2 scene 1 ophelia comes to polonius and tells that hamlet accosted her but didn't tell anything so ophelia comes to polonius and she said that see i saw hamlet and uh, we met there but you know he didn't tell anything 
and Polonius observes that the reason for his change in attitude is because of Ophelia's indifference and distance from him. See, Ophelia's father, Polonius, already asked her to keep a distance uh, from Hamlet because Hamlet is a prince and going to be a king. So his marriage will be uh, a strategic thing and he will marry someone you know, who can, you know, he will engage in a marriage for having some benefits for his kingdom and his uh, land so it is not going to happen like that he cannot marry you and all so polonius thought that what may be the possible reason for hamlet's change in behavior change in attitude because ophelia uh, was diff indifferent and kept a distance from him as polonius advised he advised her to do that there we have act two scene second and in the castle, Claudius and Gertrude don't know the reason for Hamlet's mad behavior. So now everybody knows that you know, Hamlet is mad and ma ma Hamlet is behaving in a mad way. His attitudes are changed and he is a different kind of person who was not um, like this earlier. And Claudius and Gertrude, they don't know what is the reason for this change in behavior, this mad behavior from Hamlet and they summon Rosengrantz and Gildeston because Gildeston and Ro Rosengrantz they are friends of Hamlet and they asked Claudius and Gertrude asked them what is the reason for it and asked for them to make an investigation about Hamlet's change in attitude so what possibly caused the change in attitude and change in behavior on uh, in Hamlet so they want to know so they uh, assigned this assignment this investigation upon Rosengrantz and Gildeston and Polonius enters announcing the return of the ambassadors from Norway with the good news and Claudius revealed of the threat as of now and then Polonius tells that the reason for Hamlet's madness is his rejection in love with Ophelia and showed the love letters and poems written by him to Ophelia so Polonius announces that see possible reason for uh, Hamlet's change in attitude and behavior must be because of his rejection the, the rejection that he faced from Ophelia in the matter of love and as a proof he shows the love letters and poems written by uh, Hamlet to Ophelia so Gertrude uh, Claudius and Polonius they wanted to test it and no then Hamlet comes and Polonius confronts him so Polonius and Hamlet they confess and Hamlet insanely behave before Polonius but his dialogues are pregnant with meaning so that means Ham, even though he was talking too many ma mad things he is behaving in an insane way but his dialogues is uh, whatever he is talking everything was full of meanings full of philosophical meanings. Polonius after seeing his behavior insane behavior but uh, delivering of del dialogues full of meanings they determined actually Polonius determined to arrange a meeting between Hamlet and Ophelia and they will uh, you know hide somewhere to see and watch their conversation and whether this is the sole reason for the change uh, for Hamlet and all they will arrange a meeting between Hamlet and Ophelia and they will watch over them. Then Rosengrantz and Gildeston arrives to Hamlet and they have to admit to Hamlet that they were sent by Claudius and Gertrude to observe. They say about the theatrical troupe, uh, you know, Rosengrantz and Gildeston said that, you know, a theatrical troupe has arrived uh, there, you know, uh, that information was passed by them to Hamlet and Hamlet says that they are welcome to stay in Elsinore. So Hamlet saw a chance there in order to verify the facts or the, verify the things that he learned from the ghost. So he said that say the, go and tell the theatrical troupe that they are most welcome in Elsinore, the palace. And Polonius enters announcing the arrival of the players. And Hamlet welcomes them and declares that next night they will perform a play known as the murder of Gonzago. So please remember this, the play within a play. It's a, one of the uh, greatest element, one of the important elements that we can find in every other revenge play in uh, Spanish tragedy we can have this you know there we have a play within a play uh, here also Hamlet arranges and Hamlet announces that the next night there we they will perform a play known as the murder of Gonzago and he leaves and now alone in a room now we have the second soliloquy by uh, Hamlet when everybody left him
and now in the soliloquy he says about his plans about the play and thereby know whether the truths told by the ghost are actually truths only soliloquy is a dramatic technique and there are many more dramatic uh, techniques and dramatic terms related to drama as well as fiction and also poem so if you want to know all these terms and their explanation and example you can go and visit and there is a visit my website www.highpoint.in then you can find a slot uh, for prosody a topic is there known as prosody in that you will find nearly hundreds of terms related to literature and uh, many more things and various kinds and genres of poetry drama and uh, uh, play i mean novels so you can have that too because i think such about uh, literary figures figure of speech and terms related to literature terms related to different genres and are often questions asked by ugc net jrf so uh, that will be a helpful session for you if you are interested you can go and see and have the free trial there scene 2 of act 2 and see in act 2 we only have two scenes in hamlet now, Act 3, Scene 1 begins, in which Rosengrantz and Gildeston come to Claudius and Gertrude to report about Hamlet's recent enthusiasm for the play and they agreed upon watching it in that night. Then Gertrude leaves as Claudius and Polonius went to spy upon Hamlet. So, they want to know the truth behind the insane behavior of Hamlet. So, Gertrude leaves the place, and, but Claudius and Polonius, they went to spy upon Hamlet and Ophelia in the lobby as they decided. So, they arranged a meeting between Hamlet and Ophelia and they secretly uh, watched it. And Hamlet enters by telling about wishes to dis suicide and his dilemmas. So, he is coming, walking uh, in that lobby and he is talking about his wish to suicide and uh, he is uh, in a dilemma about many things and all and he saw Ophelia approaching him and she tells him that she wishes to return to uh, return the token of love he has given her so Ophelia started a conversation uh, with uh, Hamlet and she is now talking about the token of love that he has given her and he she want to return it to him and hamlet denies giving any such things and denounced her so hamlet is also behaving in a very rude manner to ophelia ophelia is a very innocent girl and he says that he never remember anything that's anything such things that he has given he given her and he even denounces her and claudius after hearing hamlet says that since his dialogues are not insane he he his madness is not out of love towards Ophelia, but something else. So he tells that he will send him to England to have a changing scenario. So by hearing their conversation, uh, the conversation between Ophelia and Hamlet, Claudius says to Polonius that, you know, by hearing his dialogues, his madness is not out of uh, the rejection that he faced in love uh, for Ophelia. But maybe because something else, maybe Claudius is now suspicious about that his secret uh, murder of his own elder brother, Hamlet, uh, actually maybe that was known to Hamlet, I don't know, maybe he is suspicious about it. So that's why he desired to send him to England, um, maybe a change in scenario, a change in atmosphere or ambience will cure him. So, such a thing uh, Claudius reveals here and Polonius then asked by him to lead Hamlet to Gertrude so that he could spy on him there too. So, Polonius, now he says that maybe in order to know more about Hamlet's behavior, change in attitude, he uh, led Hamlet to Gertrude so that he could spy on uh, Hamlet more there too. So there end act uh, second scene one. Now we have seen second of act two. And uh, here we can see the preparations for the play is going on. Hamlet reveals Horatio that the ghost revealed that Claudius murdered the king Hamlet. So he asks Horatio to watch Claudius' reactions closely to know whether it is true or not. So uh, finally Hamlet reveals the secret, the horrible secret that he learned from the ghost of late king Hamlet. Uh, and he reveals that to Horatio, his dear friend. He assigned a task to Horatio because he wanted, Hamlet wanted Horatio to watch Claudius when Claudius watches the murder going on the 
play the same kind of a murder going on the play uh, what is the reaction of claudius he want claudius reactions watched closely by horatio and check whether the truth revealed or the things revealed by the ghost is truth or not and the play begins and the player king sleeps and he was murdered by his own brother by pouring poison through his ears so the play begins the murder of gonzago begins that play begins and king and queen everyone is there watching the play and the king in the play in that play within the play the king sleeps and he was murdered by his own brother by pouring poison through his ears the same act done by claudius as revealed by the ghost of king hamlet suddenly after seeing this without you know considering the situation claudius rises and he was surprised and he, he even cried out for light showing his guilty expressions and he leaves the room and hamlet is left alone with horatius so everyone leaves after the king leaves so you know the play also ends there and i mean the play within the play ends there and hamlet is left alone with horatius and now they both know i mean hamlet and horatio they both know the guilty mind of claudius now and uh, rosengrans and gilderstein tells to hamlet that he is wandered in his mother's chamber so polonius polonius wanted to watch over hamlet the confrontation between hamlet and uh, his son gertrude in order to know more about the change in attitude of hamlet so rosengrans and gilderstein tells to hamlet that he is wanted in in his mother's chamber and polonius tried to lead him to his mother but he wanted a moment alone so polonius also wanted to lead him lead hamlet to his mother but uh, hamlet wanted a moment alone there and scene second of act 3 now we have act 3 scene 3 claudius asked rosengrans and gilderstein to make immediate preparations to depart to england with hamlet as he found hamlet's threat as a potential threat to him say hamlet is not a little kid he is a young man so uh, he is a threat to his throne and maybe if he reveals everything to his mother then there getro will also start to hate him so he sees a potential i mean claudius sees a potential threat uh, in hamlet so claudius asked rosengrans and gilderstein to make immediate preparations for the departure to england with hamlet and polonius comes and remind of his plan to overhear hamlet and gertrude and he leaves and also polonius comes to claudius and he reveals his plan to spy on hamlet and gertrude as they as they speak as they talk so after polonius left him claudius soliloquy here we can see and he falls to his knees and begins to pray so he is too much guilty about the murder that he committed and marrying his own brother's wife and all his crude intentions so he falls to his knees and he begins to pray and hamlet was on his way to his mother's chamber while he was going hamlet sneaks to claudius chamber now he is pretty much sure that see uh, the late king his father was killed by claudius and he is guilty of it it is sure case so hamlet sneaks to claudius chamber and decides to kill him unseen but you know he couldn't kill claudius because he was praying so he retrieved from doing so because he if he kills him when he prays that will send his soul to heaven so he says uh, you know claudius actually makes a makes an excuse here for not to kill claudius because if he kills him if hamlet kills claudius while claudius is praying then that will send his soul to heaven that he doesn't want so he decided to wait for the right time and leaves and claudius rises and declares that he has been unable to pray sincerely now in act 3 scene 4 what is there and polonius there we can see claudius and hamlet they are Uh, they are confronting and they are having a very hot uh, scene they are hot in the sense they are arguing most of the time hamlet is accusing and uh, you know uh, blaming all the things happen uh, there in gertrude but gertrude is unaware that you know we we can see that gertrude is unaware that the king was late king was killed by claudius and it was all planned by 
Polonius on only. So uh, in order to hear them, Polonius hides behind the tapestry. Then he accosted her violently and blamed her for marrying Claudius. And you know he is actually blaming and accusing Gertrude. When Gertrude cries out of fear, Polonius also cried for help, and Hamlet stabs him without seeing him, suspecting the sound made by Claudius. So what happens? A horrible thing happens here. Uh, suddenly, all of a sudden, without any expectations, Polonius get murdered here. And you know, when all these accusations and blaming and violent actions by uh, Hamlet against Gertrude going on, Gertrude cries out of fear. By hearing this cry, Polonius also made a crying sound be from behind the tapestry. So Hamlet so uh, Hamlet thought that maybe uh, the Clo the king Claudius is hiding behind in order to watch over him or spy over them so without any second thought hamlet stabs through the tapestry without knowing clearly who is behind that but it was polonius and if hamlet immediately felt sad for polonius as he made a mistake but he storms at gertrude and continues to rail against claudius so that never stops that killing of Polonius even though he was sad about it he never stops from you know accusing and uh, railing against uh, Gertrude and suddenly as he was doing this ghost appears before him and the ghost remained him you know reminds him that you know what is the purpose you know you should not harm your mother because your mother is more or less innocent here you have to avenge or revenge upon you have to take the revenge upon claudius not upon your mother okay most of the case she is innocent she doesn't know the all the plans made by claudius so you have to revenge claudius leave your mother alone you should not harm her but hamlet only hamlet could only see the ghost Gertrude could not see the ghost but so when Hamlet started to talk to the ghost she believed that he is completely insane now after that scene um, he left Gertrude and dragging Polonius dead body behind him and he leaves the chamber now we have scene four so act three ends there at three ends with the death of polonius or, or murder of polonius by hamlet act four begins and scene one what we have here gertrude runs to claudius to tell about her confrontation with hamlet and tells the news of hamlet's murder of polonius so uh, soon after the departure of hamlet from the chamber gertrude runs to claudius her husband and she tells everything that has happened and including the murder of polonius by hamlet to claudius and he calls rosenkrantz and Wellston for immediate departure for england along with hamlet so as uh, they planned it, rosenkrantz and Gilderstein immediately summoned and uh, uh, you know uh, they asked for an immediate departure for england along with him act four scene two Elsewhere in Elsinore, so in a particular place of Elsinore, Hamlet disposes Polonius's body. So without consulting anything, uh, anyone, he disposed Polonius's body. Hamlet accuses Rosenkrantz and Gilston as spies of Claudius and at last agrees to allow them to escort him to Claudius. So what happens, you know, uh, Rosenkrantz and Gilston are asked to depart from uh, Denmark to England along with Hamlet so they arrive to Hamlet and uh, Hamlet accuses them for being a spy to uh, Claudius and uh, finally he agrees to allow them to escort him to uh, Claudius now act 4 scene 3 Claudius asks about Polonius's body so when Hamlet came to Claudius first thing he asked about Polonius's body and Hamlet reveals the place of disposal and Claudius then asks for his immediate departure to England. So Claudius now commands to Hamlet that you should depart to England along with, uh, with along with Rosengrams and Gildeston. Then, when Claudius was alone, he reveals about a secret message to England and hopes that they will carry it out. So when they left, when they uh, leave, when they left Claudius alone, Claudius now he reveals about a secret message that. Rosengrantz and Gilderstein carrying along with them to England that you know in that message it is said that you know the England king he has to kill he has to uh, execute 
Prince Hamlet, and he hopes that this will this will be uh, carried out, and he will be revealed from the potential threat from Hamlet. So. There ends scene three of Act Four. Now we have scene four of Act Four. Hamlet, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern met with the young Fortibrands, who was there to seek the permission to pass through Denmark, Denmark to attack Poland, a piece of land. So as they were leaving uh, Denmark, Hamlet, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern they met with young Fortibrands, who wanted to have the permission to pass through Denmark. to attack poland a piece of land that actually they are beyond uh, denmark they have to pass through denmark now by hearing their demand hamlet thought in shame about himself that he never acted purposelessly uh, even though he was a strong purposed of revenge so he says by hearing the men who are there with the prince uh, fortimbras he thought that you know without any purpose you know these persons they are following prince fortimbras to a place that is there far beyond so they uh, they don't have at least uh, a clear cut purpose but i have a purpose that means hamlet himself he thought that i have a purpose of revenge i have to revenge i have to avenge the murder of my father but i am acting like a purposeless man i never acted like that i have to be very active and purposefully by seeing fortimbras young fortimbras and the men following him he was quite ashamed of his own act and uh, his own nature of procrastination and hamlet declares that from that moment on his thought will be bloody okay Now, Act Four, Scene Five. Gertrude and Horatio discusses about Ophelia as she behaves strange after his father's death. Now, Ophelia is acting; he is she is acting in a strange manner, in an insane manner, more or less, after the death of her father. And Horatio also says that Latus has secretly sailed back from France because he heard Latus also heard the murder of. Uh, his father by hamlet so he wanted to avenge and horatio also says to horatio also says to gertrude that you know he heard that uh, latus also secretly sailed back from france to avenge upon hamlet and latus comes with the castle with a mob of commoners and claudius tries to calm calm him down so latus even though he came back secretly from france he comes to the palace elsinor and you know latus comes with a mob a group a crowd of commoners and claudius wanted to calm him down and he doesn't want a civil war uh, break there okay and latus sees the insane ophelia he again plunges to range so his father is gone now father is no more and after that ophelia is behaving strange and insane so by seeing all this he again started to uh, you know started to range against hamlet he was bloody and he wanted uh, to murder kill hamlet so this is what uh, claudius also want right so he even says that he can help him um, for that now act 4 scene 4 and horatio gets a letter from hamlet saying that the ship was captured by pirates and he has returned to denmark so horatio uh, meantime he also gets a, a letter from hamlet saying that the ship was wrecked or it was captured by pirates and he now he is returning to denmark and horatio takes the sailors to the king and then follows them to find hamlet so later horatio with his men uh, they he went to the shores of the land in order to find hamlet uh, and he finds hamlet in the countryside near the castle and act 4 scene 7 as latus and claudius were talking about the murder of polonius the messenger enters with the letter from hamlet to claudius so latus and claudius they were talking about the murder of polonius and the insane behavior of ophelia and all a messenger comes uh, with a letter from hamlet to claudius and latus was pleased by hearing of hamlet's return so latus wanted to take revenge upon hamlet for the death of his father or uh, for the murder of his father and also the insane condition of ophelia so uh, he was pleased by hearing the return of hamlet to denmark and thought that the revenge may not be delayed claudius speculates that if hamlet is tempted into a duel with latus then he can take his revenge easily since latus is so good in sword so everybody knows that latus is good with his swords he is 
he is very good at you know battle skills and war skills and also Claudius says that you know if he can tempt Hamlet into a duel with Lattice, Lattice is full of revengeful thoughts now against Hamlet so Lattice can easily win over Hamlet so you know that way Claudius purpose of killing Hamlet can also get fulfilled and Lattice agrees to it and uh, purposes poisoning his sword a single scratch with with it kills him so Lattice also agrees to this plan to Claudius without knowing that Claudius also has some grudge towards Hamlet and Claudius for Claudius to Hamlet is a potential threat and also Lattice without knowing all these things Lattice also agrees to it and uh, he also purposefully poisoned his sword because one scratch with his sword will kill Hamlet and Claudius also tells that he will offer Hamlet poisoned wine if he succeeds the fight. So Claudius also tells that, see, suppose if he wins over you, if he wins over Lattice, he will also give poisoned wine um, to Hamlet to kill him, to finish him. And Gertrude enters with the bad news of Ophelia's drowning into the river. So another death happens here. Gertrude enters with the bad news with the uh, you know with the news of Ophelia's drowning into the river and Lattice flees the room and Claudius and Gertrude also leaves and follows him. Now there ends act 4 now begins act 5 scene 1 with the grave digger son. So this is the comic relief scene that we can find in most of uh, Shakespeare's plays see in Ham in um, Macbeth we can see the Potter's scene just after the, after the death or murder of King Duncan. In here in Hamlet we can see the gravedigger scene as the uh, major comic relief scene. Then uh, in gravedigger scene we can see two gravediggers shovel out a grave for Ophelia. So they are making a grave for Ophelia and Hamlet in Horatio enters. So to that scene Hamlet and Horatio enters and ask them whose grave they are digging. So they don't know Ophelia, uh, Ophelia uh, committed suicide or she drowned him herself in the river. So Hamlet and Horatio they ask the grave diggers for whom they are digging the grave. They never give a straight answer. So grave diggers they never give a straight answer. They only say that it's for a woman. Okay. Hamlet takes one of the skulls and excavated uh, by them. So they were excavating and as they excavate skulls are popping up and they threw, they take it and they are you know shoveling all these skulls out of the grave which were which was making for Ophelia and Hamlet takes one of that skull and that is a famous in the slides too you can see that scene that Hamlet is uh, holding a skull in his hand and looking very perplexed and looking very confused and in a sad manner he is looking to that skull and suddenly the funeral procession for Ophelia enters the church here. So as these things are ha were happening, grave diggers were there. They made already made a uh, grave for Ophelia and Hamlet and Horatio is there. And suddenly a funeral procession of Ophelia enters the church here. And Hamlet wonders who has dead by seeing the procession. So in that procession he could see king, queen, lighters and many more courtiers and eminent people. So Hamlet wonders who has dead by seeing the uh, people in that procession following the dead body. And the priest interrupts the burial as she died by committing suicide. So the priest said that you know she died by committing suicide and this infuriated Lytus and Hamlet from his hiding place uh, place burst out when he learned that it was Ophelia who is dead and they both started a combat there so you know we can see that by seeing this Hamlet they, nobody knows that Hamlet is there in that grave and Horatio along with him so they hide Okay, Hamlet and Horatio they hide and they don't know who was killed and who was died there and you know uh, since pre priest announced that she died by committing suicide this actually infuriated Lytus and by seeing this by hearing that Ophelia is the one who has dead now and who for whom the grave was prepared so this was infuriated Hamlet too and he 
uh, sprouted suddenly burst out of the hiding place and also uh, Horatio along with him and you know by seeing Hamlet Lytus was expecting a duel with Hamlet he wanted to take revenge upon Hamlet so immediately they started a combat there since that was not a suitable place for combat or duel to happen so they were separated both of them were separated by funeral company and the king urges Lytus to be patient and to remember their plan for revenge so king also told Lytus that you know be patient you will get a right time to take revenge upon Hamlet so scene one of act five ends there now Act 5, scene 2. In the next day, Hamlet reveals to Horatio how he overcome the plan of Claudius to get him killed in England. So we don't know what happened to uh, Rosencrantz and Gildester. Hamlet in the next day reveals to Horatio that how he overcome the plan of Claudius to get him killed in England. Because Rosencrantz and Gildester, they had a message along with them urging uh, uh, the England's king to execute Hamlet from Claudius so uh, he knew that and he had a kind of uh, royal you know royal ring with him and he, he forged this uh, royal emblem and he made another message and he replaced the message with his message prepared by him in which in which he urges that whoever is bringing this message you have to kill the England's king have to execute these two men uh, Rosengrass and Gildestern so the, uh, this message if it uh, you know get to the England's king king of England then uh, Rosengrass and Gildestern must have dead by now so in that way Hamlet reveals how he overcame uh, the plan of Claudius now he replaced the sealed letter this is what happened he replaced the sealed letter carried by the uh, unsuspecting Rosengrass and Gildestern so Rosengrass and Gildestern they were unaware about the the message in that letter the content of the letter and uh, in that letter we know that it was calling it was a call for Hamlet's death which in turn called for the death of both of them and but sympathized with Lattice and says that he will seek his for his good favor so he said that whatever he say he has done a terrible mistake towards Lattice by killing unknowingly Polonius and he says that he will seek uh, you know pardon from uh, Lattice. A lord enters and asks Hamlet if he is ready to come to the match. So duel is going to happen, a kind of combat is going to happen. So a lord comes to Hamlet and asks whether he is ready to go for the match. And against Horatius advice Hamlet agrees to have a fight and he seeks pardon from Lattice but he does not agree. Before his, the start of the duel, Claudius says that if Hamlet wins the first or second hilt, he will drink to Hamlet's death, mixing it with poison. So, actually, Claudius is being very cunning here. He announces that he is acting like he favors Hamlet. Okay, so he says that since Hamlet is the prince of Denmark, he is acting like that. And Hamlet is also a son of Gertrude, so he cannot act otherwise. So, Claudius says that if he wins the first or second hit then he will drink to hamlet's health so usually the practice is that after the king drinks hamlet should also drink so in that way he plans that he will mix uh, his uh, chalice of wine with poison and that way even if he wins the battle or not the battle duel or combat he'll die eventually the duel begins and Hamlet hits Lytus but he refuses to drink from the cup but Gertrude drinks it even though Claudius obstruct it. So what happens the duel begins and everything is in favor of Hamlet and he hits Lytus but as offered by Claudius he refuses to you know, when Claudius offered the wine chalice he refuses to drink the cup of wine but Gertrude in turn uh, grabs that uh, cup and uh, for the health of Hamlet she drinks the wine which was mixed with you know poison by Claudius even though Claudius obstructed her not to drink that but she he cannot reveal that it is mixed with the poison right but uh, Gertrude without listening to Claudius she drinks and eventually she dies. Lytus we know that he planned to you know dip or plan to um, poison his sword while 
having the duel so lactus and hamlet each other they made wounds and gertrude falls by calling out for hamlet and now gertrude is finished gertrude is uh, dead now and uh, lactus uh, revealed that his word is poisoned as said by the king okay so lactus revealed to hamlet that you know uh, his uh, sword is poisoned and this poison this plan was all done by king claudius and hamlet runs to claudius and pushed him to drink the poison drink and that killed him so claudius uh, now uh, also died also met with his death as hamlet as hearing this hamlet runs to claudius he could not escape and he asked urged and pushed him to drink the poison drink so that uh, you know everybody knows that he uh, has mixed the wine with the poison in order to kill hamlet and that also killed gertrude by mistake and finally lattice and hamlet also dies because they wounded each other mortally and hamlet was uh, wounded by the poisoned sword of uh, lattice and lattice was wounded by hamlet too mortally so both of them died so every other important character especially uh, except horatio uh, you know uh, died towards the end of the play so that is another feature of the revenge tragedy the the stage will be filled with the dead bodies uh, as the story ends as the play ends as hamlet was dying he asked horatio to be there to explain everything to people and they heard the sound of marching Mm, as Fortibras has to come in conquest from Poland and now fires a volley to the English ambassadors. So, so actually, Hamlet, as he was dying, he knows that Horatio is the person who knows everything uh, from uh, beginning to end, whatever happened. So, not everybody knows anything. Anyone else knows anything uh, there about the acts happened, what was the intention of claudius and all so he asked horatio to be there to explain everything to people as they were dying as hamlet was dying they heard the sound of uh, young fortibras marching from poland to have a conquest there in denmark and he says that he wishes fortibras to be made king of denmark and then he dies so before his death hamlet announces that he wish he wished that Fortimbras, young Fortimbras to be the king of Denmark, the next king of Denmark. And after that, after that announcement, he dies. And Fortimbras enters the room and explains everything to them. So, and, you know, also Horatio also explains everything to them. And Fortimbras orders for Hamlet to be carried away like a soldier. So, you know, he also ordered everyone to carry out suitable, you know, burial things, burial procedures for them. And, you know, we can assume that Fortibras, young Fortibras, uh, became the next king of Denmark. So, in that way, the play ends and play is crucial. You have to know at least the major storyline, how many soliloquies are there, who all are delivering soliloquies and what action comes after what and all in this, uh, you know, in this play, which is very important. So, that's all about this particular play Hamlet by Shakespeare so you know if you have any doubts please comment that and also whatever you have learned from this video please comment that below so that I also know that you are engaging with the videos in an effective manner and also those who are watching this video further in the future they also get an idea of it I hope you have made uh, necessary notes out of this uh, video and also um, don't forget to mention your impressions and queries and such about the video and its content and if you find this content useful don't forget to subscribe and share this to your friends and if you would like to have a systematic simplified study materials in the form of audio lectures and pdf files and the previous and practice question papers then don't forget to visit my website www.highpoint.in and join the free trial and also if you uh, are interested you can subscribe to the desirable courses because that offer is going on for a limited time period and uh, thank you for watching you can follow me in instagram there you can find a savable uh, short video study cards and many more things and uh, live kisses and all i uh, in my status i every day i'm putting kisses and you can also join a whatsapp group uh, joining the link that is there in the description box so everything is there in the description box you can go and click the link and if you want to join and follow you can do that too so that's all about it thank you for 
watching my video let's meet in the next video session until then keep studying for net and jrf and stay tuned to my channel bye bye thank you